Good morning traders. Welcome to this week's Elliott Wave Forex and Cryptocurrency Market Analysis Webinar. I hope you all had a wonderful week. There have been some big moves in the market over the week and we have caught most of those moves. And if you watched the video last week, uh, you would have uh, found those analysis, those trade setups as well. Uh, almost 90% of the moves that we discussed in the webinar last week have played out exactly as forecasted and uh, we will go through the trade uh, recaps just now. Uh, for those that are interested in the course, the next course is now scheduled for the 14th of April. Okay, we had a special running for February, which will only extend for just another week. Uh, so the special is that uh, you will get in with the full course, 12 months access to the premium plan of our website. Uh, that is 12 months instead of the normal six, and that is only valid up until the end of this week. So the next course starts 14th of April. Uh, that is the live course. So when the course that you're going to get on the site is uh, pre-recorded and it is the normal course that we have. The only difference is that it's not going to be live. Okay, so for all any information regarding our services, you can just ch check out our website. That is the website there. You just need to click on it. Some people are making errors typing the website. It is elliotwave-principle.com. So go to the website for any information regarding uh, the, the plans that we have there. Okay, so that is it and any other any other social media platforms will be listed there on the site as well. So all information is available there. So now let's go through the trade recaps. Now these are all the trades and you can watch the video as well because we discussed this a bit more, I gave a bit more in-depth uh, description of or discussion of this uh, setups uh, in the, the la video last week. Okay, so let's go through this. I have listed them on a special channel here on check, uh, select just, uh, this is just a summary of what we traded and what the setup was and how we looked at those trades. Now, Euro New Zealand, let's start with Euro New Zealand. This was over 400, 500, 500 pips in just a single move from the correction that we discussed here last week on the video. You'll see me doing exactly this before this move happened. And this has eventually given the 500 moves as you see in the next chart here. So this is what happened with the Euro newsletter. Discuss this in depth and that this was going to make a move to the upside. So that was the move. So last week was actually a, one of those weeks where anybody should have been making money because almost the, all of every trade was almost obvious. It was just trends. I mean, if you look at most of the time, what happens is the market is just arranging. It's just ranging. Uh, it's just ranging. So these are not tradable conditions. But when you get this, and you can see that this happens about only 20 to 30% of the time. So that's why we analyze, we, we get paid, we, we, we are patient when this is happening, we are patient when this is happening, and then we eventually catch, catch moves like this. So this is what happened with, uh, this was a setup on Euro uh, Audi. So Euro Audi from here actually moved 700 pips. Moved 700 pips, that is what you see there. And these are the charts that you find on the website, forecasted as you can see, that is the 400 pips, just a single move there, straight, no worries about that one never uh, a straightful trade at all. So this was a uh, Euro Audi and the next one, let's just uh, carry on with the next one is, there was Euro Audi, let's look at the next one. The new, next one was a uh, Euro Pound. So now this one also, I gave a detailed description of how this was going to come down here, take this low and make a move to the upside. Now, a week before also, you will see that we were talking about this coming up here taking the top, coming down here, and then making a move to the upside. So one, two, three moves forecasted, and uh, Euro Pound is now currently at about 200 pips from the forecasted area, as you can see. But 200 pips already moved. We still expect it to move even higher, but we'll do that as we continue with the market analysis. All right, so that is Euro Pound. Uh, CAD Yen, now CAD Yen was our trade setup in the, 
uh, on the site I'll show you just now. So this is CAD yen. Last week we missed this move. We didn't trade this move because we expected that it was going to make a move here first and then give us this downside. But when it started making a move to the upside, that's when we realized that it was actually going to make a three-wave move. But the downside we did not miss and that was our trade setup uh, in the on the side, let's just go through, the, let's just see how that one has played out. So the move to the upside, as you can see, this was the move to the upside. And then this was the move. This was, we did not catch this move. So the trade was actually this one. Okay, so the trade is that one. and now has already moved over 250 pips. And you can see that is the move. And we gave this one with a stop there and not a single time did this ever, uh, was this ever in, in negative, it just went straight down to target it has reached target just like that as you can see with the next move not not no one of those painless trades that is a cat uh yen so if you see this one on our site this is how it was uh, uh listed on the site under trade setups go to trade setups these are the format of our trade setups in the site Let's just have a look there Right, so this was a US dollar CAD. Let's look at CAD yen. We're talking about CAD yen right now. So that is CAD yen and that is what you get. So these setups are very clear and you can check them even on the mobile, on the go. When this confirms, you can actually see uh, the, site, the, the site is very clear on the mobile as well. So that is was the setup. Uh, there. So what I've done with the site is that I don't embed the charts on the site because they're not they're not clear. So I gave you I give the actual trading view link so that you can have a clear chart. Now let's carry on with the rest of the setups. Uh, we'll talk about US dollar CAD and pound New Zealand as well that are there, that have also played out perfectly. So that was the CAD yen. Next one was US dollar JPY. We've already talked about US, or US dollar JPY. Now, US dollar JPY, we caught all the moves. Now, coming down here, taking the low, and then making a move to the upside. Now, this is one of those interesting pairs. So it makes a move to the upside, and then we also catch the downside as well after it completed the move to the, to the upside. Now, this was the upside. The upside reaches target as expected. Now, this makes a move to the downside. That we don't trade, we trade the next move, which is this one after the correction. And you see US dollar JPY making a move eventually to the downside as forecasted. Now, what is the next move? We will update that as we start with the market analysis. Right, so I'm showing you this because these are the setups that if you go right now to the last week's video and you just click on these setups uh, or, 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 and you've got timestamps there as well, you can, it's very easy to, to track and see what we looked at. Now, this one was a uh, chief yen, very easy, correction and then downside, as you can see, that is how that has moved. So all of these forecasted using wave analysis. Now, does it work? That's a very, uh, that's a question that one needs to answer for themselves after seeing this. This is even more convincing that this goes only simply in pattern. So now if you look at this one, one, two moves forecasted, not just one. So this has played out exactly as forecasted, the move to the upside and then it dropped like that. This is New Zealand JPY now, way before this happens. So that was the move to the upside forecasted and then the drop as expected. Now this is the latest move that we're expecting in New Zealand yen. Pound chief. Now pound chief, just like we expected uh, with the uh, euro pound making a move to the upside, I mentioned that the pound pairs are going to drop as you can see this one here, making a correction and then a drop. The, there is the correction, it's textbook setups really last week, the correction and then the drop. All of these members have uh, got this on the site timelessly before time. And everyone who has subscribed to the site uh, signed on to the site have received uh, some uh, updates and uh, the updates on US dollar chief. So we're going to talk about those as well. So this was a pound US dollar, pound US dollar. You remember the structure, if you go back three weeks, four weeks, or even two months where this structure has been building from the beginning of the year. So this structure started from the end, from the beginning of January, because we made this last 300 pips here. Now this structure, we have been expecting it to make exactly the move that it is making now. So this one here, I know we have not started with the analysis, but I'm just trying to show you the rationale behind this. Two here, now we're expecting this one here so that we can now get this structure here. 
the last move to the downside and then upside. But this is all easy, it's forecast. But how do you trade all of this? You need to get a strategy that tells you when to enter because for example, you can take a trade say here and then it starts correcting on you and you don't know how far it's gonna go. You exit and then it drops like that. So you need to have a strategy that tells you when a trade is ready. So that was a pound US dollar has eventually made the move to the downside here. All right. Euro, US dollar also, we discussed in detail that we needed to get one more wave to the downside and then upside. And as you can see, and as you've seen with your charts, if you're a trader, you already know these moves, how these moves have played out. The three-way moves on Euro, we expected it has played out exactly as forecasted. Now, this one is US dollar CAD. Now, this is one of our trade setups. As you can see, we wanted to get this last wave five here. Now to get the last wave five, this is also just a forecast to get a pinpointed entry. This was the entry as you can see on US like CAD and you take it here and then it eventually hits target like that. It went up to about 34, 50, 60 there and uh, has reached the target as you can see. That is uh, US like CAD reaching target there. No issues this week. It was just uh, one of those good weeks where everybody, even inexperienced traders would have made money. Next one was US dollar chief. US dollar chief, we've been looking at this one for a couple of days for this one to drop down here. So this is on the four hour chart and you will see also on the one hour chart that we're expecting the same, that it was gonna come here and then make a drop there. Now, this is the one that I posted to everybody who has subscribed to the site, not, not members, anybody who signs onto the site. So now if you want to receive, get some of the updates on the chat, obviously not everything, but some select chats I do post, like this one I posted when the move was here. Okay, so obviously members would have get it from the top here and I sent an email to everybody who subscribed and then they got this move to the downside. Very painless trade as well. All right, so now this is what we have been busy with and that is how that looked uh, for the week. It was, it was a good week. So many pips to look out for. Now, also we had Pound New Zealand. I also posted Pound New Zealand, although this one did not quite play out as we expected. Uh, it made a move here, made a move here, made, made a move to the downside. It has made one more up and it looks like it is now making a move to the downside. We will update this one here. Now, this one I've sent also to every member who has subscribed to the website. All right, so that's how the market looked in the last week. Now, all of these, we traded simply looking at the charts. So now there may have been fundamentals and news moving the market, but you don't have a control over that. You cannot predict what happens. Uh, some talking about how the coronavirus affects the market. Even if it was not the coronavirus, it would have been something else that would have moved the market exactly the way that it has moved. Okay, now one last trade that we are currently looking at. This one has been a trade of the week for the last couple of, for the last two weeks really. Uh, that is uh, Audi New Zealand, let's not, not trade setups. I'm looking for trade of the week. Let's have a look at this one. This is Audi New Zealand. Let's have a look on the trade of the week, where is that? Chart of the week, we'll update this one shortly. Let's have a look here. This is Audi New Zealand as our chart of the week. So we have been looking at this one for the last two weeks, looking for it to drop. So far has not really dropped, but has simply just made this corrective structure. Now, is this gonna drop as we expect? So let's have a look. So the New Zealand was really weak last week and the Euro was very strong. So let's see how this will look in the next coming week. So this was an update, as you can see, I've made an update on this chart indicating that we still want this to drop. Okay, but it has just come down here as made this corrective structure. We're expecting it to drop eventually. We've actually made this structure like a structure like this one more up. And it looks like with this one more up, this may have completed the correction. Now we'll be looking for entries here to the downside. Okay, so let's watch this one. We'll do this one. Uh, we'll update it during the market analysis shortly. Looking like a very interesting trade. So you can see that I've got a target here, but this is only a modest target. We're expecting further downside here. All right, now let's get into the market analysis. Let's start with uh, the indices. The indices have made huge drops 
in the last week, and especially the S&P 500. Let's have a look at the S&P 500. We'll start with the indices. Now, on the indices, if we go to the daily chart, we've been looking for this to continue with the move to the upside, like five-way move to the upside. Let's have a look here. So we've been looking for this wave five to play out up to around that level. It looks like the structure has changed here and the wave five would probably have ended here. We will do an update on this just to check what the next move is. But the clear thing is here and with correlation with the rest of the indices, looks like we are going to have this correction that we thought it was gonna only come after a move to the upside. I didn't update this, I just left it there because that is where we forecasted it, that we were gonna get the correction. We were, expected this, we were expecting this current correction that is happening now after another move to the upside. So now what is the next immediate move here? The next move that we're gonna be looking at, this is not just gonna drop in a straight line, we're going to get a corrective structure here and then a continuation to the downside. Now this correction here may take a couple of days as well before we move to the, to the downside. Now there are two ways that this correction can actually play out. This can actually make a move like this and it can actually be a structure like this and continue higher. But we're not expecting this move at, the, at this stage because uh, the rest of the indices are showing moves to the downside. So the DAX and the Nikkei and the UK 100 are showing clear clear signs of downside and we'll have a look at that shortly. So with the S&P 500, look out for this to be overextended here in the correction before we get the next move to the downside. So that will be the same structure on the Dow and the Nasdaq. So looking at the Nasdaq, where it was exactly the same analysis. We, went into it to, we wanted it to make a move, one more move to the upside to complete the five waves there. So the next immediate move that you expect on the Dow is this one here. You'll see when we get to the DAX why we're expecting downside on the S&P 500 as well. The NASDAQ is similar. Basically this S&P 500, the Dow, Dow Jones and the NASDAQ are exactly the same chart with some minor differences. So we've got a pulsing move, simple correction for a bit of time here. It's gonna be a bit overextended here in this corrective structure. Let's see what happens here. It's not just gonna move in a straight line, some point here it must give you a correction before the next move uh, to the downside. So even if we miss this move, you've seen with the way we take our trades, we don't just take, we don't pick tops and bottoms, we follow the trend, right? So we follow the trend to the upside. Now the trend has reversed. If it has reversed now, we follow it to the downside. Now you wait for this to, to correct here. Okay, and then the move to the downside. Now the clearer charts are on the UK 100. Now the UK 100, this is not the UK 100, let's look at the UK 100. Now the UK 100, we are looking at this corrective structure here. Let's just adjust it clearly. So we are looking at this corrective structure. It's a move down here, a pullback, and a move down here. So this, we're still expecting it to make a move to the downside. We still want more downside on this one to continue lower. So let's have a look in the lower time frame what the next move is going to be. We need to have another one here doing that. So this is an ABC structure. So this is obviously an impulsive move. This, the C leg is an impulsive move, but you can see that it only has one, two, three waves. Still need to make one. Now this here may not necessarily be the reversal. It may just be a pullback before we make a move to the downside. Now the reason why we're expecting a pullback that is on the DAX and the Nikkei. The DAX and the Nikkei look like they're gonna have structures like this for downside. So as much as UK 100 has done this, it can make a double here and an X here and then a Y to the downside. So let's look at the DAX. Now the DAX, you see this structure on the daily, it is not so clear on the daily, but when you go to the weekly, that's when you see why this needs to make a move to the downside. Let's go to the weekly. The DAX is making a corrective structure here at the top. And the corrective structure is this one, two, three down, one, two, three up. Now this can come down impulsively without making any corrections. And if it does come down impulsively without making any big corrective structures, that means that this is an ABC structure, a simple single flat correction, whether it can be an expanding or a running flat, that is what we would be expecting. So this move can come down impassively uh, with a straight, in a straight, almost a straight line fashion like this. 
up to around that level. Okay, so if that is the move, if the DAX is so clear, then the rest of the indices may be following the exact same structure. Now we've already broken out of that structure. Remember, we don't trade trend lines. Any pullbacks here, you may be looking for this one to come to the downside. This is on the weekly. Let's go to the lower time frame, like the four hour. So we can see the structure here. Now on the four hour, we've clearly broken out of that, of the move to the downside. Now we've only just broken out of this one. So it's no biggie. We've only just got out of this structure. It's a very clear impulse. Now, all you want to do now is to get, just get pullbacks and take it higher. And like I said, this may be quite impulsive. So this trend to the downside, all you have to do is wait for pullbacks. Unfortunately, I cannot share our indicator with you. When you've got a strong trend like this, every time you get a pullback, it tells you when it's ready to come down. When you get a pullback like this, it tells you when it's ready to come down. Because what happens with this, you can find that this correction keeps doing this, keep doing this, keep doing this, and you don't know how far it's gonna end. So our indicator tells us when it is ready to make the next move down, especially when there's a trend like this, it's very easy to trade. So this is the DAX, just expect pulsing moves to the downside. You could see from the weekly, why are you expecting this to continue lower? The Nikkei, same. Nikkei has got to the weekly as well. Also has a very clear structure on the weekly, similar to uh, the DAX. Now you can see on the weekly, it's a pulsing move down, it's a pulsing move up. It's a three-wave structure. It's a move up, it's a move down, and they move to the upside. Now again, this is another ABC structure, not a double XY, it's an ABC structure, and now we've got a pulsing move, which you expect here now is pullbacks and moves to the downside, okay? This will be a C. So now these are also going to be shallow and the trend will be down to the downside. All you wait for is pullbacks in the lower degree, pullbacks in the lower degree. But if you see this correction uh, on the weekly, it looks small like this. On the one hour, it may be bigger than this structure when you look at this. Let's go to the four hour. So on the four hour, you'll be looking for corrections, something this size. Corrections, something like these sizes and then it starts making a move just like that. Every time they make a move to the downside. So you're looking for a simple impulsive move coming to the downside. That is the knee K. Lastly on the Nifty. So the Nifty also has made that last, uh, that move to the downside, but this one looks like it's making the move to the downside in three waves. Okay, so last time we traded, the, uh, we looked at the structure of the Nifty, was this X uh, running flat here. After the running flat, it made the last move to the down upside. So this one could be making a one, two, three, and then this may be still extended. So following the theme for the indices to be making pulsing moves to the downside. So this one may make pullbacks and a move to the downside. Now, if it makes a move like this, that's a five wave move. It all needs to be corrected like that before we continue, uh, before we continue with the move to the downside. So. We've got a clear trend on the indices. All you wait for is pullbacks and sell. Pullbacks and sell. The same way that uh, you uh, people, uh, traders have been buying the Nasdaq and the S&P 500, it was just simple moves to the upside. Now the trend seems to have reversed. You just wait for this, reversed. Wait for this until uh, the structure's complete. So DAX and the Nikkei have got clearer structures. When they complete their structures, that would be a good indication that the indices have completed their moves. All right, so now let's look at the cryptocurrencies. We'll start with Bitcoin. Bitcoin. Let's have a look at Bitcoin. Now last week on Bitcoin, we were here with this structure. It was making a pullback here. So we looked at this one to be making a W here and an X here. So this one has now made a move here. So it may be a combination of a W and an X and a Y here, maybe a combination of this zigzag and a combination of this zigzag. So we may make a bit of a move to the upside here and make a move uh, and one more down before we resume the move to the upside. And that move will now be around the 50 to 61% area. So the downside here on Bitcoin may not exactly be complete. We may just have this one as the corrective structure, one more down before we get a move to the upside. Okay, so that's what we're gonna be waiting for on Bitcoin. So even if this does not reverse at current levels, we get something like this, we may get a corrective structure like this. That corrective structure can result in something like this. So that means a W 
XY structure a double correction, which will still be around 50 to 61% before we resume with the move to the upside. Because as it looks now, it does not look likely that Bitcoin is gonna make a move to the upside. Okay, so we may wait for this one. Even if we see something that looks like upside, we will just be a corrective structure. The rest of the cryptos, similar. We're looking at these pullbacks now. So this is Ethereum. Ethereum, you're looking, uh, before we go move on, Bitcoin, I have to show you the weekly structure here. Let's go to the weekly structure on Bitcoin. So this is Bitcoin here on the weekly. We've made this move here in three waves, a pulsing move here. This one, it looks corrective, so a move up here. This, as much as it's coming down, it can be making a move like this and go retest the top and come back down here and then move to the upside. So this is just a forecast of how this correction may play out. Now, another possibility is that this makes all the move a, move, a corrective move here, all the way back to the previous low around the 6,000 area and make a structure like this. That will still be a corrective structure that should result in Bitcoin reaching again all time highs. This on the weekly, so you can imagine how long this is gonna take. So that is the focus, but the immediate move right now on Bitcoin is a very passive move on the weekly to the downside. We should see correction in the next couple of uh, sessions uh, before we get a move like this. Okay, that is Bitcoin on the weekly, Ethereum. Ethereum as well. Ethereum on the weekly, you see a clear pulse here. So this tells, this can be a good indication that Bitcoin may not go reach 6,000, may just correct at current levels and make a move to the upside. Why? Because we've got a clear pulsing move here. There is no reason why this one should make a pulsing move to the downside. If this one starts going sideways here, we'll be looking at Bitcoin for the same for one more move to reach the top for making a move to the downside. So we just need to watch this corrective structure on the weekly. Go to the four hour the current correction in the lower degree. You can see that this move uh, is a three-wave move. It's similar to that of Bitcoin. It's three waves down, two waves back. Now here we need another three waves here. We need another three waves. So we've got three waves down, three waves back. We need this one to make another two waves. So we we'll have this one to make complete that two waves before we get a move to the upside. Either that or this one, over extends and we get a, this as a W, it's an X and then a Y. Now this may even retest the top there and come back for making a move to the top there. But now there is no clear setup on Ethereum or, or Bitcoin. So now the setup will be this. If we get this one to be a correction, like this, you can be selling this move back here. Okay, now you're also gonna get this move. Whether this goes all the way or it's just a pullback, you can get get involved there with does this WXY structure. Okay, right, so that is uh, Ethereum, uh, Litecoin and Ripple. Similar structures as well, as you can see, there's no difference except that with Litecoin, this is clear A. I've got a regular flat for a B, and then if there's C there, so that means this is a passing move, this one may end with a diagonal C there whether this is gonna make a reversal there or is it gonna make a double correction, another A, B, C there, that remains to be seen. We know that at this stage, we must get a pullback after this move here. Whether it's a pullback or an upside, will be determined by the structure. One, two, three, there's so possible, and then this one can be a W, X, Y structure for more upside. Okay, so that is what we're looking at, so this We've made a first move here. We've made a move, first move on Litecoin, and then we're looking for this one to pull back and then upside. Right. So that is that. So we're expecting a move to the upside if it does not make a double correction. If it makes a double correction, this wave two may be overextended, or it can even make a flat like this, then this will still be our wave two at this level. For now, we we'll leave it there and then watch how that plays out. Ripple, same. Apparently guys, this spike is only on this broker. It is not a real spike. So don't worry about this one here. But that does not change the structure. We've got a move here, we've got a pullback and then we're looking for this one to move. So it's an ABC zigzag here. ABC zigzag, 
is to fit one more down, we'll make a move to the upside. That is what we will be looking at on Ripple. Right. Now, let's go into the US dollar pairs, and I'm gonna be referring some of these charts uh, onto the website, uh, from the website. So let's have a look at uh, the US dollar pairs. Let's look at the US dollar pairs. If we go to the site, let's start with uh, the Euro. We'll refer to the site just now, Euro US dollar. Now, Euro US dollar, we're still expecting continuation to the upside. The Euro has been very strong in the last week. We still expect that move to continue. We must get a pullback before we make a move to the upside. Okay, so this is a Euro and what the focus looks like here now. Okay, we're making, we're looking for the zone to pull back and continue higher. Okay, it's a bit of a mess there. Let's have a look at it here. Now, Euro on the weekly, we have been looking at this structure to pull back here. This is already updated, it was like this even before the update. Okay, so this move to the upside on the euro, we've been expecting from when this was making a move to the downside, even from last week, but this current move. So we expect this one to correct and give us a two wave, even if this one gets up to this level, up to about 50%. I've been talking about this 50% correction from when we were coming down here, because this is a single move, it's an A move, five waves needs to correct at some point. We know the trend is down, so we will need to see that correction at some point before we resume the move to the downside. So that move, if that correction comes, then the next move is here on the euro. This is on the weekly. Let's go to the lower time frame here, see what the structure is. On the lower time frame, we've made three waves to the upside. That's why we're expecting three wave pullback and then continuation to the upside. Simple as that on the euro. Uh, now the DAX is also just the opposite of the Euro. Let's have a look at the DAX, the uh, DXY, sorry. The DXY is just the opposite of the Euro. We're expecting this pullback to be in a different time frame. It's just a switch it off from this time frame. We don't want to see it on the four hour. Uh, let's just uh, update there, guys, sorry. Right, just take this one off. Right, so the DXY, so showing us uh, the next uh, coming sessions, the US dollar index should be showing some weakness. After the policy move from the Euro, we'll be looking for this one to come down. Uh, look at the weekly on the DXY. Uh, let's have a look on the weekly. So the weekly on the DXY, the move that we're expecting is to the upside. But like with the Euro, if we're expecting the Euro to go up, we'll be expecting the, uh, the DXY dollar index to make a pullback before we make a move to the upside. So that pullback on the DXY, this is the move that you saw on the Euro. Pullback that I wanted 50% on the Euro is this one. This is where the DXY should come around, at around 50% of this move. Okay, so that is when the Euro, US dollar uh, should, uh, weakness should end at 50%, and that is where Euro, US dollar stre Euro strength on the Euro, US dollar should end at 50% before we resume with this move. So now when you get this move that is all the way to the upside, and we should get a clear correction here, and then the trend will just be up. Okay, the trend will just be up. Now when those pullbacks are done, then the structures are even clearer. Right, that is uh, the uh, DXY then, now let's look at uh, pound US dollar. Now pound US dollar, let's complete the move, the correction here that we've been looking for, you saw on the site as well, let's have a look on the site. Pound US dollar, on the one hour, this is actually the latest update, which has already been updated. So this is, uh, remember on uh, trade setups, this is where we sold the last move on the pound. Now I want to show you why we were looking for this one and this one to make a move back there. So we look at pound US dollar on the four hour. Let's look at the four hour on pound. So now if you look at the four hour, let's take this off. 
And the reason why we've been looking at, and if you look at all the previous videos, I've been looking at one structure and one structure only on the pound US dollar. So we, we've been looking at this. We bought this 300 pips. There was a capitulation move the last ending this year. After that, there was a move down here. And I have not been trading the pound ever since this correction has been playing out. Because as soon as this made, made a move here, I was expecting that we we're going to have a correction that fills the space and then a move to the upside. And that is exactly what is happening. It's not exactly filling the space here. And that is not an analysis anyway. It's just what we expect the correction structure to play out as. So we've been looking for this one now to do this. A move up, a correction, and then a move up. And this is nothing new. And this is not because this has made a move. This we, we've, we've looked at it ever since we've been coming down with this move so that we can get the next move, which is this one, first to the downside, and then upside should then resume like that. So we've got a move here, and then we've got a move here. I'm gonna clean the chart just now. So you can see clearly, let's switch off here as well. Now that is the structure that you were looking at on pound. And that is the reason why when this was making this move, it was corrective, and we know that this move needs to end somewhere around here, so you could take advantage of this small move. Okay, so now is this going to reverse from here and we'll get that move that we've been looking for all along? That's what we need to wait for in the next coming session. The structure needs to confirm that that is what we're going to get. You see this candle doesn't mean anything, but we need to start seeing some corrective structure and some indication of upside for us to complete this one here, to complete this structure. Okay, so that's what we're looking at on pound US dollar. Complete that move, one, two, three, and then upside. We are here, let's see if we get this correction. Right, so that is pound US dollar. US dollar cared, I showed you this one was our trade setup has reached its end of the move there. Uh, let's have a look at the weekly, because this, this we don't just look at on the one hour. So these moves we understand where they're going, where they're coming from, because we know what the weekly chart looks like. So this on the weekly on US like CAD, as you can see, we wanted it to make a move to the upside here. If you don't see there is the pullback. So we've now reached on US like CAD this area, or this is actually updated, this area. So this may pull back and go straight like that. It may not go in a straight line, but just on the weekly. Let's go to the lower time frame so you can see the exact GPS of what the move may look like, uh, uh, for lack of a better word. So this may still pull back. The sequence may still be up. It's incomplete. We started with the one, two here. Looks like we have only completed the wave three of the, in the blue degree there. So we may be getting a pullback and then one more up before we come down. So that is the structure that we're looking for on US like that. So keep an eye on this one. Look for that pullback. Look out for that pullback that is currently happening on US like that. And we'll be looking for it to move. You complete this move in, in back. All right, so that is a US dollar cat. But apparently, I have been missing US dollar chief analysis for the last couple of weeks. Let's have a look at it now. Now, with the DXY, with the DXY looking weak, and we have been looking at uh, this one to be making a Five wave move. And this one is the way forward. That is why I was looking to sell this one because this was simply one, two, three, four, and then we're looking for this one to be a five. So now we'll look for this one to make a correction. The same way we want the euro to make a correction for one more up, we'll be looking for this one to make one more down because it's inversely correlated with the euro, inversely correlated, directly correlated with the uh, DXY, that is the dollar index. So we'll be looking for a correction here in continuation lower. Right. So that is a uh, US dollar chief. Uh, let's just look at the one hour chart on US dollar chief. Not updated as yet. We're going to update because we have now got completed this move. So, uh, we had, I expected this one to may possibly make a uh, um, what you call um, truncation here in the wave five. That's why I only expected this move because this was a little bit too deep. That is the reason why I was expecting. Implantation. This is showing signs of weakness for more than that. So this will be confirmed here whether it's going to make that truncation or we're going to continue lower. Right, so let's keep an eye on that one, but it should be out of this page after out of this page until we get another setup that is US dollar chief. Right, Audi US dollar. Audi US dollar. 
let's have a look at Audi US dollar. Now, Audi US dollar setups we've also looked at here. Let's just have a look. Just didn't discuss this once during the trade setups. Just have a look here. Very interesting trade setup on Audi US dollar that I've played out here. So this was Audi US dollar setup. And this is the reason why we've been expecting that uh, Audi US dollar will make a move, will continue lower. We've seen this chart last week on the video as we were doing this, that we wanted it to continue even lower. And exactly that is how that move has played out. And let's look at the latest update on Audi US dollar. On the live chart, Audi US dollar, let's show this back there on the four hour. Let's show it on the one hour. One four hour looks a little bit cluttered for now. I have not cleaned it up yet. So we have now only completed the wave five in all these degrees in the triple degree and the five degree. So now we want this to make a pullback in the red degree. And the red degree is uh, slightly bigger than all the corrections that you see previously. Just wanna get the whole chart to be on the screen. So there we go. Now we've got this move here. I'm not going to go into the detail of why I'm saying this is a one, two, and a three, and a four, and a five. So you can see that that is a structure that has completed. If you while you look at the chart, you will be able to study it and understand why it is analyzed like that. So we're waiting for this pullback, which will make the red degree, and then move to the downside. Okay, so that is Audi US dollar. New Zealand is similar, we're waiting for a pullback as well at current levels. How far will that go? We want the pullback. It has also completed this move to the downside. And then the pullback. Now, this is not my style of analysis or my style, the style that I use to show you the setup, because if I just show you the one, two, three, four, fives and all that here, you, you won't even understand why I put a one there, why I didn't put a one in there. So I show you the structure. And let me show you the structure and why we are looking at this uh, at it the way we're looking at it right now let's go to the daily that's when you can see this clearly now this is what makes a lot more sense so you see here you've got a structure move here you can go into the detail of this and what is the detail that you see on the one hour but the structure is showing us this more moves to the downside we had a three wave move to the downside here we've got a three wave pullback now we're expecting another three wave to the downside that is uh, simply what we are looking at there you see here it is clear when i show you the structure than when i show you the numbers okay so the numbers will just confuse you really, and that is not the idea the idea is for you to clearly understand the structure now we're waiting for i can just say correction to the downside correction to understand which correction is, is it, which, which uh, cycle is it in, which uh, degree it is in, that's when you go into the details now. And that is what you see on uh, US dollar, on uh, Audi New Zealand US dollar. So you've got a three way move to the downside, ABC, the pullback here. This is an expanding flat. And now we're looking for this one to make another structure. So that's why we're expecting this one, smaller one. I don't need a bidding correctly there. A smaller one there, and then downside. Okay, so let's switch off here. Let me draw it cleanly one more time. It's a move to the downside. One, two, three. One, two, three, expanding flat. That is your W here, that is your X there. Are you looking for this one, two, and then a three. Okay, but if you look at this here, in the lower degree, there was a move here, three waves down, three waves back, and three waves down. Now, what do you expect here? Three waves down, one or the pulsing move down, you expect this short one that I'm now forecasting. That is why you see at the end of those five waves, I'm forecasting a pullback here, and then a move down here. So there is method to all this math madness that you see here. So we're looking for this one to pull back in that red degree that I've shown you. Back again to the structure so you can see now that you've seen the structure, you'll be able to understand where the numbers come from. Let's go to the four hour and show you that analysis. Now, in the four hour, you can now, or rather, one hour. Now, in the one hour, you can see one now that the cycle has now completed. This is why. This is why we're expecting the pullback. So, why are we expecting the pullback? Because that is the next move as the higher degree 
cycles. Right, U.S. dollars are correlated with uh, U.S. dollar CAD. Let's have a look here on the weekly where we expect U.S. dollars are to go. A lot of weakness on the U.S. dollars are. We've now reached the previous highs. Uh, looks like, let's just have a look here, switch off everything here and see what the structure looks like. We've made a three wave move to the upside. We've got another three wave spec. Now this one will possibly make another three waves. Now if you look at this one here, you've got a expanding flat there. You should get another correction here on the ZAR. So that will be three waves up, three waves back, three waves up. That's why we're expecting a correction and then an upside here. So that means this correction is not related to the structure concept. Initially, we were thinking that this was going to be one, two, three, flat correction and then upside. I hope that is clear. In this, uh, I'm going I'm to take this off, show you what we expected of uh, US dollars initially. We were expecting that this was going to be one, two, three, one, two, three, and then move down before we get to the upside. So now we can see that there's no relationship between this and this swing, except that this is all the correction. And now we're making this one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay. All right, so then that will be the end of the move around that 1600, uh, 16 ZA area. Okay. So that is what we're expecting. So pull back at current levels for resuming the move to the upside. So unfortunately for South Africans, more weakness for the ZA against the US dollar. US dollar JPY. Now, US dollar JPY. I showed you on trade setup how we got the move from here to the upside and then move to the downside. Now, this move did not only just come uh, last week. This move from way back, I need to show you where this move come from so you can understand how wave analysis works. So this move on US dollar JPY, let's have a look here. Now, this is the latest update. I want to show you the old one. So the move that, that is currently happening now on US dollar JPY comes from uh, over a year ago or two, a year or two so ago. Now, if you look at this chart, this is the week daily chart on uh, US dollar JPY. This was posted 11th of August last year. This was, it was only an update. So from June, already knew that this was has to make a move back to the downside. We also had a trade that we took here from this level and then downside here. You can go to around these dates and check the videos around that dates and then you'll see that we were selling this one here to complete this. That was June last year. Now we've made a move down here. The current move that you saw on US dollar JPY that ended around the 1200 area, around this area, is exactly as forecasted from last year in August. So the moves that we're trading now, we knew all along that they were gonna happen. You can see the forecast here. This is for the next coming year or two, could be years. So all we do is just to identify trade setup as the market moves. That is the US dollars, the US dollar JPY. Now let's go to the uh, real life chart on US dollar JPY. So now we've reached this level. Okay, we've now reached this level as expected last year already, and we want to make a move to the downside. What did that weekly chart show you? Let's see what we're expecting from that weekly chart. We're expecting an even deeper move to the downside. Although I don't expect it to go all the way down there, I'm expecting it to come back to around levels where it started the move to the upside. Just break slightly, just break slightly here and make a move to the upside. Now that will be a simple one, two, three wave structure. You just won't see it with a lot of cluttering there and then it move to the upside, which will be this move. Which move are we looking at now? We're now looking at this. We have now already played out one, two. Now we're looking for this the third wave. That is used to the JPY. A bit more detail there so you can understand where this analysis comes from. So now we're looking for simply pullback. We've got a trend now to the downside. Pullbacks then continuation to the downside. Okay, so let's show the structure again. We have completed this move here on the daily. This one should be here. 
and that's it. So we've already broken out of this structure, which we saw as three waves. So the three wave move, now we're looking for this one. That. The trend line does not mean anything. We've got a passing move, we need to get correction in pullbacks. Okay, so the move may be three waves like this and make a structure like that. So that's why I'm now expecting uh, that this one may only just come around this level and not necessarily around there. So watch that US dollar JPY for downside. Euro, Euro yen. A move up, pull back, and then in three waves. So we saw this in our previous webinars. We discussed that we're gonna have these three waves and we're gonna have this one making a move to the downside. So what we see here is three waves down, pull back, this one should continue lower to make the three waves. We even take the low here around the 16 area. But it's on the daily, let's look at the four hour. So the four hour, as much as this is on the daily, so the daily will not show you the whole uh, GPS. It won't show you the pullbacks. So let's have a look here. We don't want to see this one on the four hour. Let's just take it off from the four hour. Let's take it off there. We don't want to see that. Okay, so there's a possibility for this to make a bounce here and make a move to the downside. So that's not have to happen. The reason why we're expecting that bounce is because we made a pulsing move, we made three waves down, we may need to get another move to the upside before we zoom lower. So let's just watch this one. We've come down in three waves there. We made a pulsing move and we made this move back. So let's see if we're gonna have this move to the upside. We need to wait for that confirmation. We don't mind waiting. So seen last week was worth the wait. And that is what we do. Uh, you look for the setups, you track them, you wait for them until they play out. Chief JPY, a couple of weeks back, I said there's, there's no reason why Chief JPY should be making a move to the update. And this is the reason why. If we go to the weekly, let's go to the weekly. Let's go to the weekly on Chief JPY. Let's go to the yens and see why I never expected the chief folks to make a move to the upside. Big move to the upside. Let's look at the end first. Chief JPY weekly. Right. This is the reason why. You've got this corrective structure here on the weekly. We're expecting this move. So this from the 6th of February, the downside that you see on Chief, this chart had already been updated up. Oh, it's only the 6th of February because I was updating the chart, but this chart was drawn way back before this moves happened. Right, so this is Chief JPY. What do we expect with the Chief JPY? Now that we know on the weekly we need to drop, we now start looking for cell setups. Okay, is this the end of that move? Are we gonna start seeing the moves to the downside? We need to see here correction and the move to the downside. Trend line traders will be waiting for this one to just do that and then move to the downside. So we know why we expect it to come down because the structure is this. It's Three waves up, three waves back, and three waves up on our, and now we're looking for this one to come down. Okay, look for corrective, corrective structures, corrective structures, and downside. That's Chief Audi. Audi US dollar. Audi US dollar, the forecast on Audi US dollar, let's see if it's still there. You'll see that Audi US dollar, we're looking for it to make this move up back and then up before we come down. Now, what has happened here is that we've made a move up and then we've come down like that without getting this one to the upside. Let's just have a look here. So this is the move up and the move all the way down. So I still wanted it to make one more up here. But we've adjusted the structure, it makes a lot of sense even with that, even with that move. So that structure is now, these charts have already been updated just a matter of uh, sending them out to members. One, two, three. So we're ready for next week to see what the next moves are going to be. We're going to have one, two, three, and then a move to the downside. Initially, the reason why we didn't get this uh, one more up that we wanted here, we were looking at it to be making one, two, three, one up before we come down. So that would have been a simple one, two, three structure. So sometimes you won't see this because you just Making a puzzle, you bring up the puzzle, sometimes it fits out differently. But 
that is the move that has happened. I think catch that move, we're trading, obviously, head yen was our trade setup, so, so that's the one we were looking at. New Zealand, that's New Zealand. I've shown this one on trade setups, you've seen this one already. We're making a move to the downside, a pullback on New Zealand before continuing lower. So wait for the correction, we're still coming down. Head yen, already showed this one in trade setups. Also, we're just waiting for a pullback after making these three waves. We've, made the, we've come down in five waves, three waves back, we've come down in five waves. In the lower degree, we still have one more up before we come down. Let's have a look on the one hour so you can see this one. So on the one hour, that is your C, still needs to, to make this one as a wave four. That's so why we're looking for that pullback there. Silver and gold. Our silver and gold. Last week we wanted this to continue higher and break the all-time highs here. Not the all-time highs, the previous, just the previous high here. Our we're looking for this one to be one, two, three, a four, and then a five. Okay, so that didn't happen as you can see, obviously. So the move here now that we're looking at, we got this one wrong, obviously, you don't get them, you can't get everything right. But it's a wave analysis anyway, and there's no 100% strategy. So that is the move to the downside. So what we see in hindsight is that, let's just, let's just switch this off. Unfortunately, we're only seeing in hindsight. So this was a move in three waves to the downside. This was actually three waves and was not gonna give the, far, the, the fifth wave. So it's three down, it's three up, and now has made this move to the downside. May even be looking at this one as what we call an AB based pattern. Okay, the Elliott wave AB based pattern because it just tags here and it looks like there's no clear relationship between this and that. Okay, we just need to see how far this will go, whether it will still make this one as an expanding flat and a move to the upside. It does not look likely. It looks like we're gonna start making a move to the downside. Okay, right, so that is uh, silver should make him continue to move to the downside from these levels. Uh, gold, we also, we also at least got some move as it was coming down here. Also got some move as it was coming down. We also expected that it was gonna make a move down, but when it came down and made this corrective structure here, we only saw this small move to the downside as you see here on the side on the updates. Nice thing is about the body charts is that they are updated daily if there are changes. Let's go to the commodities here. We're looking at the commodities now. We'll look at oil as well. Just looking at the commodities and looking specifically at gold, silver, and oil. So gold on the one hour, we got this last bit of a move to the downside as you can see, update. Expectation was that this was going to make a move to the upside. And then you saw the five waves that we were expecting. They played out quite quickly here. If you look at last week's webinar, this purple degree had not completed. We still wanted to get the green four and the green five. They've all played out very quickly without really making the all time high step. Okay, so that is the move. We got this small move to the downside here. Now, the question is whether this move now is only a pullback and what is going to connect. So we just need to wait and see confirmation from around this level. So this could possibly also be a one, the start of a one, two, and then the three here, four, five. That would be the start of a move to the downside. So let's keep an eye on that. We'll update this one in the week. Right, so that is uh, silver and gold. Oil, weekly on oil. What has been the expectation on oil? expecting that this move will make a small move to the downside here and then bounce back. That was on the weekly, let's switch off there. On the daily, the same thing you'll see on the oil here. Let's go to oil daily. Daily on oil, we saw this one as a wave four and expected it to make a move to the downside. Around the 46 area, as you can see, oil has now reached 45 X expected and that is but with analysis does, I'm showing you all the time frames because all the time frames were showing one thing that all uh, the oil move was going to come down. You can check the video last week as well, not just last week, we've been talking about oil downside for the longest time, right? So around 47, that was the forecast there, that is oil coming down there. And lastly, on the one hour, we're clearly looking for this one. Slight move to the upside here and complete this 
wave four before coming down. Now we are around this level, we are around 45 area on oil. Where do we expect oil to go? Let's have a look now on oil. Uh, let's have a look. So I only look at the WTI, the West Texas Index. But this morning I found a reason why I should look at uh, the Brent crude as well, just to look at uh, how far will this go? Because we couldn't see clearly on the WTI index how far oil will go, because some were asking, how far do you think oil will go? Uh, as far as we were looking at the structure, we wanted oil to only come down around this level. This structure structurally has completed and it can reverse at any time, but how far will that go? Now we have to look at the brand to see the structure, brand crude. Let's look at brand crude oil. Let's look at brand crude. Now brand crude, looking at brand crude, there is a possibility that oil may make an even deeper move to the downside. If this is a move here and this is only the pullback that we see here. So we can get a structure like this. Uh, so now Brent also is also showing a similar structure because we've already reached this, this, this level here. We may get a pullback at current levels on oil. So we just want to wait for confusion around this level. Will we get a correction here like this or are we going to get a passive move here? Indicator will tell us which one we get here. So in the Brent is showing the same thing here for upside. Uh, earlier on, I actually thought Brent was doing a structure like this, but this will not be a Elliott wave structure. It does not exist. So we'll be looking for oil to start making a reversal as forecasted. But we don't rush. We wait for the market to give us an indication. All right. That is the commodities. Let's run through the euro pairs. The euros have been uh, really straightforward. Did we look at pound yen? I don't think we looked at pound yen. Let's look at pound yen. Let's look at pound yen. Uh, where's pound yen? Let's look at GBPN. Have to move it up there. That's why we skip it. Pound yen before we move on to the rest of the charts. Now, pound yen is tricky now. We need to wait and see confirmation. We have forecasted that it was going to meet this correct picture. Now, if the forecast is incorrect and this one starts making the downside, then we're not going to get this upside as we've forecasted initially. So this is my forecast. This is what we expect. We've made a clear three-wave pullback, and I'm expecting a move to the upside on pound yen. Okay, so we now start looking for upside here. We start looking for upside. The break above this, pound yen will go all the way to the previous eye here at 156. So we just need to see this, but this looks a bit impulsive, but that's what they do. They usually push it so, so hard that you'll think that it will never reverse, but we don't pick tops and bottoms. We wait for confirmation. So we'll see when we can move up that. Start seeing a corrective structure, then that will change the whole structure and then we'll have to redo it. Right, looking at the pound pass, pound tiff, so last week was a theme for the pound, for the pound pairs to drop, and as expected, they have dropped. Pound chief, you saw the move here. There was a trade set up here. So now, just like pound, just like pound yen, we're looking at this one, this as three wave pullback that should resume the moves to the upside. Let's do more for this presentation. Pound Audi. Pound Audi is at the previous high. Have a look here. Another the previous size. So we're looking for this one. Let's have a look at the count here. Let's take this off here. We're looking this for this one to start making a move like this up, back, and then this last move here. So as much as we can see a pullback on pound Audi, that will only be a pullback with slow one further upside because the structure is this one here. Look at the blue W, look at the blue X, look at the blue Y at the top. So pound Audi is not done and there's no indication of any reversal at current levels. So maybe a pullback and one more up. Okay, so let's switch everything off here so you can see why we're actually expecting one more up here. There's an expanding flat here, there's one, two, 
degree. So now here it's W X. We just want to be this degree here. One two three. One two. Three. Okay. On New Zealand, we also want to pound New Zealand to drop from these levels based on the. So you can see that there's a difference between pound Audi and pound New Zealand in the way that they have moved in the last week. Pound New Zealand and our pound Audi did not drop like they also the pound S. So now this one is at the previous side, there's a possibility of making one, two, three, one, two, three, and then downside. Let's see if we can have any indications of downside here. Don't pick the tops. Uh, wait for it to confirm here. Let's go to the four hour, see if we get any confirmation. Uh, so we've got a pulsing move on the four hour, but we need to see a clear corrective structure to confirm that that move is on the top. Now, when I posted this one to the subscribers of the site, this one was making a correction here and it started making it move. We're expecting a correction here and all the way down. But it made one up here, it's making another down. Now, again, we're going to expect this. If it confirms, then that is a great downside, at least back to this level. And that is a big move because that is about 500 pips back to this level. Let's watch this and see. Do we have divergence on the RSI. Yes, we've got divergence between this and that. So let's see. See how that goes. We also had divergence here and it didn't drop all the way. So even if it makes one more up, as long as this one keeps coming down, then we know that eventually this is gonna make a move down side. On CAD. On CAD, clear structure. One, two, three. One, two, three. If it comes down with a pulsing move, pulsing move like it is now, that will be a simple a, B, C structure of the indicators there. Clear A, B, C structure there. Why are we looking for that? Let me just show you the whole structure on pound cat. We're going to move down here. Now I've got this internal structure here in one, two, three. Another one here in green. That will be one. That will be one, two, three. One, two, three. Pulsing move. So you get that structure. So when it comes down here, we should be expecting that we can have a move in this. So we get the yellow down and then upside. That will be your A, your B, C. That will be your W, your X, your Y. This will be your A, B, C structure again. And the lower degree, let's get this one to do W. No, that's A, B, C. This will be A, B, C structure. Obviously, they are all different degrees, so that's why we're expecting this one to continue lower here. Pound CAD lower. That's all on the pound pass, a euro pound, because of the weakness in the pound pass, we expect continuation to the upside to come and reach this level here. Simple as that. So, this one on trade setups, we're simply looking at this one. This is a way for of the move that is coming from the top, by the way. So that is the way for trading this piece of the way for this or that you saw under trade setups coming down here and making a move up that we just wanted to take the top here before coming down. This Euro pound, Euro chief. Euro chief busy with wave four. Wait for this one to make one, two, three, and then downside. We'll update this one. The reason why I'm rushing through this is because the wave four is only just starting, so it's still gonna take a couple of sessions to complete before we come down. There's no, nothing really there. Euro New Zealand have made that 500 pips to the upside. Just waiting for a pullback here. Actually an 11 swing sequence, we want to pull back here and then move to the upside. Right, this is uh, Euro Audi. Euro Audi also just waiting for a pullback and then upside. Okay, just one more up before we come down. We are on a diagonal in the higher degree. I'm just showing you the lower degrees here. All right, Euro CAD, the same, pullback and then upside. So further strength on the Euros in the next week as well. As you can see we've got a clear pulsing move. So the clear pulsing move on the Euro, Euro US dollar as well. So just pull back and then continuation to the upside. So I'm rushing through this because there's no correction. I would be analyzing the correction for you, trying to focus where the correction is gonna end, but uh, it is still only just about to start. Let's look at a few crosses. Audi Chief, 
I'm actually not going to go through all the crosses. I'm just going to look at uh, uh, a few. Audi, New Zealand. Audi, New Zealand. I'll show you this one. It's our trade of the week. So we're looking for this one to now start making a move. And so start uh, getting pullbacks here. You can start selling them. Start selling the pullbacks. Right? Chief downside. The Audi. The general theme is that the Audi is looking weak. So just looking for here you're just going to have a pullback in three waves and then downside let's just have a look at this an update on the charts pullback in three waves as you can see what we're expecting. just adjust there it's not going to be that big it's just going to be a pullback like that how do you use we already looked at cad Still continuing lower, continuing lower, just like oil is. One more down. Audi cared. Just doing it for those that are trading this three wave pullback. You saw the three wave move here and continuation lower. There's still no divergence here, and this move should continue lower. Even though we saw this one doing that, move up here, a bit of a correction and a pullback to do this. Should start seeing this one slowing down. They've been on the downtrend for a while. New Zealand CAD. Pull back in three waves there. One, two, three. Coming down with divergence. One more up. Possibly around that level. And lastly, New Zealand Chief. Continuation to the downside. So New Zealand still weak. So to see New Zealand US dollar still looking weak and then continue to the downside. Thank you very much for joining me, guys. I hope you enjoyed the webinar, Trade Responsibly. Uh, we are ready for the next week. All the charts have been updated for members. They will be uh, added to the site shortly. Have a great week, guys. Yes, everybody, don't forget to subscribe and like the video so that you can get a notification next time I post. Yes, everybody.